This episode of Out of the Trenches is dedicated to Arthur Fonzarelli, because he's cool. Out of the Trenches is where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and answer your questions about the First World War. Um, Vimpel, which I think that three is supposed to be an E, okay, uh, says, who were the Savage Division? Okay, and what role did they play in the war? Cool question. Uh, the Savage Division, the Wild Division, or the Caucasian Native Mounted Division, same thing, was a cavalry division of the Imperial Russian Army and was formed in 1914. It was uh, commanded by the Tsar's brother, Grand Duke Mikhail Alexandrovich Romanov. Um, the division consisted of mainly Muslim inhabitants from the North Caucasus region. Now, the Caucasus was exempt from compulsory military service in Russia, but the North Caucasus nations formed voluntary regiments to fight alongside the Russians during the First World War. Uh, the soldiers came from, among other North Caucasus uh, nations, Chechnya, uh, Ingushetia, Karachi, Circassia, Kabarda, Azerbaijan, Dagestan, Kabarda, and also some from Ossetia, Armenia, Georgia, Abkhazia, Ajara. They were known for their bravery, their valor, and their discipline. This is very true. And with the outbreak of the First World War, the Savage Division was formed, consisting of three brigades of six cavalry regiments. In August 1917, the division was reorganized into the Caucasian Native Cavalry Corps, consisting of 1st and 2nd Caucasian Native Cavalry Divisions. This unit acted as part of the 8th and 9th Armies at the Russian Northern Front. The Soviet military authorities, though, disbanded the division after 1918 when it sided against the Red Army in the Russian Civil War. Valerio asks, um, how were internally displaced persons treated by their fellow compatriots? Well, in the case of, say, France, where the number of internally displaced persons, or IDPs, rose from uh, about 150,000 in August 1914 to 1.85 million in September 1918, the results were uh, dramatic. Now, the French government made no preparations for refugees before the outbreak of war. At the start of the war, the French authorities tried to move French refugees to the interior of the country. This was to prevent certain areas near the front from getting overcrowded. Now, the internally displaced persons themselves, they didn't want to leave their homes any more than they had to, so they tried to stay as close as possible to their homes so that they could return as soon as possible once they were able to. Um, the government tried to control the distribution of displaced civilians. Inhabitants of the areas of Longueville, Verdun, Epinal, and Belfort, who lived close to the front, were evacuated as, quote, useless mouths to feed. Inhabitants of areas where refugees or IDPs found shelter had a hard time adjusting. As the historian Peter Gattrell puts it, it was assumed that many refugees were opportunists who lacked the stomach to resist and who therefore took the easy way out. What didn't make anything any better is that locals believed that refugees drove up the price of things like housing and food, and of course, the refugees and IDPs, they also needed jobs. Okay, Arthur Fonzarelli asks, were there any instances of soldiers bringing their significant others to or near the front lines, especially on extremely static sectors of trenches on the Western Front? Well. Bringing your loved one to the front was practically impossible, right? Women were supposed to play the role of waiting figures back home. And this, 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 all this, this disrupted traditional social structures as they were before the war. Sexual and emotional frustration at the front and at the home front led to a really big change in the way people back then looked at intimacy and gender roles. Many people consequently saw the war as sexually liberating, allowing them to explore new behaviors, new identities. Still, men and women were expected to, to stay loyal and abstinent. Jason Krauthammel, who writes about sexuality in the trenches and at the home front, states that soldiers and their wives' sexual instincts were supposed to be suspended while both sexes dedicated their energies to fulfilling their mutual roles for the nation. Yes, that is a quote. Uh, paradoxically, though, um, the spread of venereal disease proved the reality was somewhat different. Um, sexual adventures it turned out to be a popular relief from the stress 
of the front lines for millions of men dislocated from home and distant from traditional social structures. Prostitution was a big part of the relief of sexual stress. Uh, Krauthammel writes, Militaries organized systems to regulate sexual behavior. The German military organized a system of regulated brothels just behind the lines, with medical examination of prostitutes. The French military also expanded a system of maison tolérée, tolerated houses, where prostitution was carefully regulated. If you'd like to see our Transcaucasia special, you can click right here for that. And you should also check us out on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and our subreddit. We're everywhere, aren't we? We're everywhere. See you next time.